What's up everybody, welcome to the Guna channel and reflecting back on a weekend which saw Liverpool complete a week in which they won the League Cup against the billionaire bottle jobs of Chelsea with a threadbare team, then convincingly rolling past a really good championship side in Southampton, again with players on a pitch who barely played any Premier League minutes at all, and then the last gasp Darwin Nunez goal against Nottingham Forest really showed the stuff of champions. This is what champions do, isn't it? Against all the odds, when they could make the excuse of injuries, they still grind out three points. And it's over to Manchester City, who able to field a full-strength team in their derby against Manchester United. And all expectations were on a cricket score and a chance for them to regain some of the ground lost to us in goal difference. But for the first 56 minutes, they found themselves a goal down at home. That said, they still turned it round into a 3-1 with Haaland scoring at the end because otherwise it would have been a really miserable performance from him and one of the misses of all time from him. But they showed what they're about because that's what champions do, isn't it? When you're down and you somehow still grind out three points. And then all eyes on Arsenal as we go to Sheffield United with talk of a potential record becoming the first team in English footballing history across any of the leagues to win three away games by five goals or more. A few of us wanted to put our necks on the line and say we were definitely going to batter Sheffield United 5-0. I was reluctant. I predicted 3-0. It wouldn't have mattered if we'd won 1-0 with a dodgy penalty in extra time. What was important was the three points. But the way that we set about that task, the way that we absolutely annihilated them, I've seen things from this Arsenal team I've never seen as an Arsenal fan. We're not just beating teams. When we played Newcastle at home, it was such a demolition that all Newcastle could do was pump the ball long just to get a few minutes of breathing space. We pressed so high and contained so well. Newcastle were really out of the game. I think their fans would have filed home at half-time if it wasn't for the fact their last train had gone. We're clearing stadiums. When we played West Ham and I saw their fans filing off home at half time, I honestly couldn't remember ever seeing that before. Then we did it again to Burnley. And then yesterday in the game, Sheffield United fans at 15 minutes were going home. 15 minutes. What does it say about a performance that you turn up, you look forward to it all season last season? They would have been dreaming of nights like this. And 15 minutes into the game, they'd seen enough. But is that a problem? The fact that this season we haven't done what Man City and Liverpool did over this weekend. We haven't come from behind and won somehow. I mean, there's a game at Luton, but we should have won that comfortably. And the fact that we didn't probably says more about our lack of concentration throughout that game. We didn't show Newcastle away or Aston Villa away. So in the three horse race, is the fact that Arsenal haven't really shown that kind of grit and determination something to worry about? Or is it just a sign that we're not in that situation because we completely dominate teams at the moment? This calendar year, I know I don't need to tell you the stats, we've played seven, won seven, scored 31, conceded three. This from a team that desperately needed a striker. We've now scored more goals in the Premier League than anyone else and conceded fewer. On paper, if you were to think about this in the sense that we have scored the most goals and conceded the fewest, We've beaten both of our title rivals. We still have to play City away, but we got a draw at Liverpool, which is a fantastic result. I mean, City go into the game at Anfield on Sunday, having only won there once in the last 20 years. It's a tough place to go. So why are so many of us reluctant to stick our neck on the line and say, now you're going to believe us, we're going to win the league? Why are there so many other fans that still don't believe? In fact, in the two polls I'm going to show now, lot that with 14,000 people voting, it's neck and neck. No one can really tell who's going to win the league. It could go all the way to the wire. I think the answer is that last season taught Arteta and the players a valuable lesson. That for all of the excitement and energy of the season, it petered out into nothing. In the end, we had nothing to show for it. We broke a record for the first 19 games. We got 88 goals in the season, but it all counted for nothing. But last season, whenever somebody accused Arsenal of not being in the race, we as fans, we reacted. We chomped. We couldn't wait to tell people they were wrong, that they misjudged us. This despite the fact that going into the season, very few of us gave us a chance of being title contenders at all. 
We broke another record, an unwanted one, for being top for the longest without winning. So I think we've learned something. I think the reality is that we're just doing what you're supposed to do. We're taking it one game at a time. Not thinking ahead to the City game just yet, but instead at the Brentford game. We have to beat Brentford. Because when we beat Palace and we got that convincing 5-0 win, it was after we'd had an abject performance against Fulham and somehow lost to West Ham and got knocked out of the FA Cup. And the mood was bad. So just beating Palace 5-0 under Roy Hodgson in one of his last games as a football manager, it was just because they were terrible. It was a considered an unconvincing victory against Nottingham Forest, but I don't think it was. Yes, we gave away a silly goal at the end, but really, apart from that, we totally dominated the game. Then we slaughtered Liverpool. West Ham and Burnley put to the sword, as we know. Newcastle demolished at home. Sheffield United literally torn apart. It was one of the cruelest and least compassionate performances. It showed a ruthlessness I don't remember from an Arsenal team. It's it's all just just an act. Stop! He's already dead. Cast your mind back to a time when Arsenal have ever gone away and won 6-5-6-0. It's just not something that we're used to. I I don't really know how to deal with it. But I do know this. I know that it counts for nothing unless you cross that line and win the league. And all of the people ready to tell us now that we aren't going to do it. I think we just have to take it that that's their opinion and not rise to it. And just let our players do our talking for us on the pitch. And there's a lesson there for Marcus Rashford. Because... I don't have a I don't have an agenda against Marcus Rashford. I I did a video a while ago now saying I don't really get it. I don't think he's quite there. I think the mentality is not there. And hiring a PR agency to do a video in which you say that no one can question your commitment on the pitch. Well, no one's com- no one's questioning your commitment on the pitch for any other reason but the fact they can't see it on the pitch. When he scored that thunderbolt against City, I thought good for him, finally doing your talking on the pitch. But if you want to know why people are questioning your commitment, Marcus, it's because you go out drinking in Northern Ireland the night before training and then don't go in and then don't play particularly well in the games. You're not the first Manchester United player to be drinking in Northern Ireland before games. I'm pretty sure that George Best would have done that a few times. But the difference was George Best showed it on the pitch. No one had to question his commitment. For my generation, when I first remember Man United, there's always a drinking culture. Paul McGrath never che- never trained. But on the day, he always played like one of the best centre-backs in the world. Football is going to be divisive. No one's going to want to tell... No one's going to want to come out and say Arsenal are a fantastic team. There's too many teams that don't like us. And maybe there's a touch of envy in there and maybe there isn't. Maybe people don't believe in us because of our track record. Last season and the season before, we quote-unquote bottled it. It doesn't matter what they think, though. It doesn't matter if Rio Ferdinand really thinks that Arteta would jump at a chance to manage Manchester United, which I think most of us can see is frankly ridiculous. It doesn't matter what anyone says about us. What matters is that the players are taking it one game at a time. Look how quick everyone was to say that it's all fallen apart when we played Porto. Well, we've recovered pretty well from that setback, and it is only half-time in that tie. And I'm sure that Porto, despite their fantastic result on the weekend against Benfica, aren't looking forward to coming to the Emirates. I'm sure they're not. I'm sure that Manchester City have some doubts about how they're going to play against us at the Etihad. Maybe we only need a draw out of that game. Maybe that would be enough. Theoretically, if they don't beat Liverpool, we will still be top going into that match. And if they can't beat us, we'll stay top after it. I think the lesson that I'm learning is that you don't need to rise to the people's allegations that you're not good enough. You can just trust in this young team, not as young as they were, a year older, a year wiser. And they've been through the kind of adversity that builds champions. You don't get to be a champion without tasting some defeats. And last season, we tasted ours. I am a little bit unsure because I do think, what happens if the chips are down? Have we shown at any point in this season that we can fight back? Arguably, we did more of that last season. 
But at the same time, I wonder if you need to do that if you're controlling games as much as you are. I think listening to Chris Wilder before the match and then after the match, eulogising about Arsenal, it's clear that we kind of have teams scared before they even set foot on the pitch. And when the first five or ten minutes is as dominant as last night's was, I mean, we had a chance cleared off the line. We hit the bar all in the first two minutes and we finally scored in the fifth minute and then didn't stop scoring. The second half, a bit lacklustre. Questions I would have to ask about why Vieira came on and not Emil Smith-Rowe. Why Eddie Nketiah doesn't get a chance. After all, he did score a hat-trick against Sheffield United. And you think, throw him on there. Is Jesus now feeling the pressure that he might not get his place back off Kai Havertz? Kai Havertz! Silently getting about his business. Part of a team that is destroying opposition teams. Goals coming from all over the pitch, like Arteta said. The question as to who's going to win the league will only be answered one way, and that's on the pitch. We can speculate and cogitate all we want. It won't matter. It didn't matter last season, and it won't matter this season. All that matters is that the players are determined and focused, and I think that we're seeing that. It must put so much pressure on you to try and live up to the games that they've been playing. Home game against Brentford. Of course, I'll talk about that nearer the time. But the thing I really want to say tonight is, look, there's no need for us to become triggered by people who say that, wow, we're gassed because we're beating crap teams. When you beat seven teams, they can't all have been crap. There's no point in rising to debate when people tell us that we're going to bottle it again because we always have done. We'll see. All the people saying, clip this, Arsenal won't win the league. You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. But what I do know is that this year, this time round, the feeling I have of belief, that's what I'm going to hang on to. It's not the hope that kills you. It's giving up that kills you. And I think, though we may not have proven it in the way that Liverpool and Man City did this weekend, I think we proved that we're ready, that we're fighting. If we keep this squad strong and together and fit and look, we've got... Party back was on the pitch yesterday. That's always a good sign. Tommy Asu and Zinchenko will most likely be fit for the game against Brentford. In fact, the only player out at that point will be Timber, and it's not long before he comes back. So let's just let the players do the talking on the pitch. Let the other fans say what they want. No one likes us. No one wants Arsenal to win the league, even though Man City are imperious and keep winning. Normally, it's the British spirit to support the underdog. Jurgen Klopp's last season, I think, if there are that many neutrals out there, they probably want to see him go out, maybe with a quadruple. Personally, I think this Arsenal side are ruthless enough to destroy his ambitions. But time will tell. And the predictions that I did, are still the Man City will win, because it's hard to overlook the fact that they get the three points when they need him. I want to hear from you, though. Are you starting to believe? Were you formerly Arteta out and now you flip-flop to become Arteta in? It's all right. You're allowed to do that, by the way. Or do you still see worrying signs that we haven't been tested yet and when we are at the Etihad that we'll crumble? We've still got to go away to Tottenham. We've still got to go away to Man United. And that would be painful, wouldn't it, if it was a defeat at Tottenham that meant we couldn't win the league. All these things are possible. You can look ahead as far as you want. But I think what I'm seeing from this Arsenal team is they're looking only at the Brentford game and that's what I'm going to do. It was a fantastic result yesterday. It was it was a completely unusual feeling to be sitting watching the second half with no drama and no jeopardy. Very un-Arsenal. Like I said, let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for supporting. We've hit a really important milestone as a channel. And uh, more news on that in the coming weeks. But uh, thank you so much for your support, all of you that tune in regularly. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, please do so. And a quick like wouldn't hurt anyone. Until I see you again. Be lucky. Lots of love.